And greetings. What a beautiful day to worship the Lord in Ypsilanti. Greetings and welcome this morning on this glorious day of all saints. I hope you had a good All Hallows Eve yesterday, a beautiful moon certainly in the night, and an early awakening today. So may we be in the presence of God as we begin to offer prayers today for Almighty God. You have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace to follow your blessed saint in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The reading this morning, set for the saints, comes to us from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Here in the core of his sermon, he presents what we know as the Beatitudes, the blessings of God for the people of God. For when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Receive and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Sermon on the Mount is far from being simply another simple message about how to live. In the Apostle Matthew's teachings, it's a description of, well, nay, a vision, a promise, a summons, a summons to a new kind of life, a kingdom life, a life standing with God. That is, as in all his parables, so also in his teachings from the mountain, Jesus is trying to help us imagine what life looks like 
when we live according to God's will and God's way. It's a set of teachings that absolutely contains critical information and instruction about ethics, some of which challenges long-held notions of right action, but even more overflows with promises. I hope you caught that. It's about right action, but not just a moral lesson, but a vision, a promise of the way life is and will be. And this section is particularly promising. When God is present and we live according to the logic of the kingdom, all is not as it seems. Note that the list of those blessed, that list does not align even remotely with a typical list of the blessed. Those who are mourning or who are humble or extend mercy rather than exact revenge or strive for peace rather than exert their will through violence, just to name a few. Contrasts to the way the world is today indeed. For in this blessing and promise are also challenges. We've already named one. Imagining that Jesus calls many conditions we seek to avoid as blessed. In addition, many of us tend to associate these blessings usually in largely material terms. So Jesus' words help stretch our imagination to transform our vision to see God present and at work in so many other ways, particularly in service to others, but also in the dark and difficult elements of life. For if I were to capture in one word the tone and character and importance of this sermon, it would certainly be transformation, not simply a change brought about by instruction, but a transformation, a change from the inside out, a totally different way of seeing the world around us. It's hard to bring about a transformation. Turns out one researcher reports you can't really even teach people to have a transformation. Education is not the key, which might be hard words in the county of Washtenaw in the state of Michigan that education is not the key to transformation. Transformation to awaken a new view of the world usually comes about through struggles and lived experience, which brings us into troubled places where we do not see a way out, but we are granted a gift to put things together in a new and better way. To see where God is at work is a beginning. Not simply or evenly, primarily in places of strength, but in places of vulnerability, amidst our grief, alongside those who exercise mercy, for those who work for righteousness, and in so many other activities, the world considers not just meek, but weak. The God we know when Jesus always shows up where we least expect God to be, in the feeding trough in a stable, rather than a jeweled crib in a palace, among the poor and destitute, rather than with the rich and the powerful, on the cross of an outlaw, rather than astride a war horse of a conquering hero. Similarly, God shows up in our acts of sacrifice and mercy, rather than, the, than through the assertion of our will or attempts to collect worldly power. God invites us to stretch our notions. Jesus invites us in his sermon to stretch our notion of what God's presence means. God promises not to remove our grief, but rather to transform it, as we see in the resurrected Christ, that the promise of God's love, 
is more powerful than death, and that for life rather than death will have the last word. Similarly, what can seem like small gestures of being merciful in a world where an eye for an eye still reigns, or working for justice in a world where injustice rages, are precisely the places where God is at work, blessing, sustaining, and supporting God's beloved children. In light of God's character and promises, this is no small gesture, and we are reminding, reminded that nothing done in love is ever lost or attempted in vain. Nothing done in love is ever lost or attempted in vain. Given where we are just now, nothing that so many of our people, given where we are just now, noting that many are grieving untold losses of loved ones from the pandemic, as well as the usual causes, losses of livelihood, of hope, of confidence about a future. Let us turn and anchor ourselves in the invitation and command to live according to God's kingdom ethic allowing God's kingdom promises to transform our thoughts, our words, and our deeds this Sunday and always. In this effort, we are joined and joined ourselves to all the saints across the centuries redeemed by the grace of God, of the God we know in the face of Christ himself. Amen. Terry Lamb, and Dolores Church, and Harless Wilson. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For Christ invites all to come to his table who come in faith, to be fed and renewed and nourished, to be sent forth in ministry anew. For it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God creator and ruler of the universe. We praise you for our saints and the martyrs, for the faithful in every age who have followed your Son, 
and witness to his resurrection. From every race and tongue, from every people and nation, you have gathered them into your kingdom. You have shown them the path of life and filled them with the joy of your presence. How glorious is your heavenly realm, where the multitude of your saints rejoice with Christ. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels, with prophets and apostles, with all the faithful every time and place, whoever sing to the glory of your name. Christ has come, Christ is here, Christ will come again. For you are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, sent to be our Savior. He took flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. His words are true, his touch brings healing. To all who follow him, he gives abundant life. When evil sought to destroy him, he lay in the darkness of death. You raised him for the grave. He is our risen Lord forever. We give thanks that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks to you, he broke it. Giving it to the disciples, he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take it and eat. In the same way, he took a cup. saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and wine, for the bread which we break and the cup we bless. May this be the communion of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every time and place. As this bread is the body of Christ for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Gracious Lord, hear our prayers. Number us among your saints, O God, and join us with the faithful of every age that strengthened by their witness and supported by their fellowship. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us and may with them receive the unfading crown of glory when we stand before your throne of grace. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when with the redeemed of all ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory and honor are yours, O God. So these are the, the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the feast.
Please join me in our communion prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this feast of grace and life. As we have been served, help us to serve our neighbors. As we have been fed, help us to feed all who are hungry. As we have been loved, help us to love the world, because in Christ Jesus, you have loved us. Amen. Now we go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. Wherever we are, God has put us there. For God has a purpose in our being there. Christ who dwells in us has something he wants to do through us. Where we are right now. Believe this and go in the grace and love and power of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you'd like to join us for a Zoom coffee hour, please join us at 1045 today. And greetings and blessings to all of you this week. Amen.